Uh, I'm joined by UCC and Waterford hurler Irla Daly, who's teamed up with Electric Ireland to preview the Electric Ireland Fitzgibbon Cup. This year, Electric Ireland's hashtag first class rivals campaign celebrates unexpected alliances formed by county rivals uh, coming together in pursuit of a common goal to win some of the most coveted titles in GEA. So, for example, Irla, and delighted to have you on, you were playing with uh, Cork man Rob Downey. Do you, do you enjoy that? I mean, obviously, you're used to playing this more with people you grew up with, Waterford, with people from your local area. Do you enjoy the playing in Fitzgibbon and teaming up with guys from other counties? Ah, oh, yeah, Shane. Like, it's, it's definitely like it's definitely in, in kind of an interesting thing, really. Like, I would have actually played with Rob and the likes of, like Shane Barrett and all them and Potty Power in school with uh, CBC. I heard with CBC um, back in secondary school, so it actually. It's nothing really different to me. It's not exactly a shock, you know, to the system or anything like that. Um, but it definitely is interesting, you know, one minute you're playing with these lads and then the next minute you're playing against them, you know, matter of, matter of weeks, months later. So, yeah, it's definitely it's definitely interesting. It's um, well, That's what Fitzgibbon is all about, really, you know. Yeah. Um, Any time that we're talking about Watford and your name comes up and you've played well, I bring up the fact that your mother's from my hometown of Burris Lee. If you play... Mm. Well, you don't play badly, but let's say it didn't go the way you wanted. I say the the list more native, but I, like I presume <laughs> growing up because you know your uncles would have been very well known hurlers in my area. I mean, it was probably hurling all the way. Your dad Niall, of course, uh, hurling in his um, hurling in his locker too. Yeah, yeah, sure. Growing up, Shane, to be honest, she's completely immersed in it. Like you know, and and don't worry, she she makes me she she reminds me now and enough times during that during the year that that the other half is different area as well, you know, but. Uh, I know, sure, growing up, everything was, was hurling, really. And, and as you said, Jerry and, and, and Timmy would have been well-known hurlers as well. Um, and dad and his hurling background. So myself and my younger brother, Korak, obviously would have, would have you know, been completely immersed in it growing up and, um, you know, paid dividends. So we're at kind of, you know, at a stage now where we're both on the, on, on, on the county team. So just try to kick on now as much as possible between and, the two of us. And did you ever hear your uncle Timmy used to say about someone, you know, if someone was annoying him, I'll split you in four even halves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? that would sound, sound like him, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, just to ask you then about coming on in the All-Ireland Final in 2020, I'm sure you've been asked about it before. Like, what a what an environment to be thrown into for your debut and coming on for a class player. Like, you know, it was obviously huge to lose Tyke the Burka, but you came in and you took to it like a duck to water. Uh, yeah, I suppose like I think at the time you don't really have enough time to process the you know how big an occasion it was you're you're kind of expected to just go in and, and try and add something to it um you know it's only after the game you really have a chance to reflect on on I suppose how big you know an occasion it was and and how maybe pressurizing it, 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 it may have seemed at the time but uh no it wasn't it wasn't actually too bad it was um I think at the, at the start of the year or at the start of that championship season, I actually fractured my ankle, so it kind of saw me out of of the earlier stages of the campaign, and I was only coming right at that stage, you know, kind of semi final, final time. Um, and uh, you know, while it wasn't far from my deal losing Tyg um, to the Cruciate, um, it was an opportunity to go in and, and and try and add something to the team. Now, albeit we ended up losing the losing the game on the day, which you know, you know, it's ultimately the the goal. But no, it was definitely um, you know a special occasion. The fact that there was nobody there and during COVID times and all that stuff, it was, you know, definitely added, you know, an element of, of interest to the whole thing, kind of an eerie old atmosphere there. So, yeah, definitely, you know, interesting to be there. And because you were just thrown in, I suppose nerves wouldn't have played as much a part if you had to know going into your first championship game into an All-Ireland final, maybe nerves would have played a part for you. Yeah, like you, as you said, like it was so early, you know, in, in the game that you kind of didn't really have time. You had you know, you're only like 30 seconds to get your gear and get thrown in straight away, like, you know, so you didn't really have time to process the whole thing, whereas if you were starting, you would have had two weeks to process, you know, the whole occasion, and as I said, didn't have time to, you know, think about it too much, so it was it was, it was, was fine that way, you know. And I suppose then when you came into the following season, you're there, I mean, in your head, are you like, well, if I can go in and do pretty well against the best team, the, the really dominant team at the moment, you know, there's no reason that I can't kick on and get on to another level again. Well, that's it, yeah. It's kind of, you know, trying to improve every time you go out and and having a manager like like Liam and a coach like Mikey, you know, they, they definitely don't hesitate to, to throw you in the deep end at any given time, you know. So it's either, you know, go in, try and add something or or, you know, pack your things. So um no, it was it was it's definitely all, especially the game, the way the game is going, you're it's just trying to progress as much as possible and 
you know, improve from one year to the next, Shane. So, yeah, kind of like that. Actually, uh, I'm just thinking uh, I should ask you about Bally Gunner, and obviously you'd know them very, very well from the club championship. Do you think they can go on? I mean, they've shot Neil in the All Ireland semi final, that's at Parallel Park, and, you know, obviously there'll be St. Thomas's or Bally Hale after that. The way they're playing at the moment, they look like a team on a mission. Do you think that they, they can go all the way? They're definitely showing signs of it, Shane. Yeah, they're they're mm. look, they're an exceptional team. Um, and they've they've created a very good culture in that club and and you know, they're very honest, they work for each other and having played with all five lads who are who are on the Waterford team, you know exactly what they bring to the table and you can kind of see why they're so dominant in Waterford Club Hurling and why they can carry that form into into the later stages of the championship in, in the All Ireland series. So look, whether or not they're able to do it will remain to be seen, but I've I, for one, hope hope they do it, and they're more than capable of doing it, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so, what a vote of confidence it was when Liam and Liam Cahill and Mikey Beavins decided to stay on last year. That was huge for you. Uh, yeah. And look, it won't come as a surprise that that we, as a group of players, wanted them to stay on. You know, they're they're a, they're a very good management team, and and it's great to have Liam in. He's he's honest. He's he's straight, and you know, every member of the panel is you know. They're very fond of, of of the management team that are in place at the moment, and you know, a very professional setup, and um, just training away, really enjoying it now, and and just delighted that they, they that they took the decision to stay on with us. Mm. And do you feel that there's more in this Watford panel? I know you've had players that have been injured in the last year or so, and you were missing a lot of players for that Clare defeat in Munster last year, and obviously you kicked on after that. But even the likes of Parik Mahoney would hopefully be back again next year, and his form at the moment is, is really encouraging. So do you feel there's more in this Waterford team? You know, I suppose we'd like to think there is anyway. Um, you know, it's all about, as you said, it's, it's, it's getting the, you know, and Liam will say also, it's all about getting the, the, the best 15 available to, to put between the white lines. And, you know, we try to go out every day that we play and, and, and improve on, you know, a performance from the week before or, or two weeks before, or whatever it may be. And, you know, we like to think that there is always room for improvement and, and Liam and Mikey will say the same thing. And, and we kind of echo, you know, what they what they say to us the whole time and, and like to think that there's room for improvement every day, every day we go out, be it the Munster Championship, be it later on in, in the, in the All-Ireland Championship, you know, if that's the case. So, um, Definitely, yeah. There's always room for improvement, you know. Wherever, whenever we take to, whenever any team takes to the to the to the pitch chain. Mm, the the twenty twenty monster finally pushed Limerick very close. I think you were level going into the final quarter. Then the two games that you've played since the All Ireland final and the All Ireland semi final, the gap's been that bit wider. Probably double digits both times. Like, mm. how strong a proposition are they? And is it just that they're strong in all positions? Ah, uh, yeah. And to be honest, they're. They play, uh, they play very, very kind of. Um, they play very much to you know to a system, but they they know what works for them, and they're they're um, very calm on the ball, very composed, and and use the ball very well. And not to mention, they they have very good personnel playing on the team too. You know, they've they've exceptional players in every position. So mm. they've definitely been the benchmark, Shane. You know, and and you know they def they have a target on, on their back, but they're, they carry the, the mantle of, I suppose, championships of champions very well. And um, looking forward, look, it's the round robin series this year in the championship. So just, we're looking, really looking forward, you know, to playing them and other, other teams and, and seeing where we go from there. Mm, and like, when you talk about being composed on the ball, it's one thing saying it, but when you're out there in the face of the pressure that teams like, for example, Kilkenny and Limerick put on you, it's much harder said, or much easier said than done. Yeah, exactly. And um I'd say like Limerick have been have been excellent at that over the past, you know, four seasons. And you saw in the Munster final this year when they were under, you know, uh, extreme pressure from from Tip Rear, the way they came back was was just it was just something to behold. Like they, they gave a, a you know exhibition in the second half and Tip Rear had played really well, but you know, it's it's the mark of the Limerick team at the moment. They're exceptionally composed under pressure and, and they just completely, you know, showed that in the Munster final, I thought, this year, you know. Mm. Uh, how big of an influence is Dan Shanahan still in that Liz Moore dressing room? I know he was coming on last year, but he's playing since the early nineties, and he's still going. Ah, uh, yeah. Look, you know, you know, Dan. Dan is Dan. You know, he's a massive, massive influence in 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 Liz Moore GA. You know, and and Morris and Dan need no endorsement. You know, from me or any other Liz Moore fella. You know, they're uh, they're great in the club, and and you know, they're they're training away still, and and Dan is. You know, Dan is a character up in up in training. You know, he's um, he's great to have, and he's he's witty, and you know, but 
you know, he, he works hard behind the scenes himself. He's an incredible Nick and he's a great role model to have in the club, you know. Yeah. Do you think Lismore can make that breakthrough in the next couple of years? I believe your your brother, your younger brother, is another very strong common hurler. Ah, uh, yeah. Look, we you know we'd like to think so. I think seeing the current trend in the Valley Gunner team, you know, they're they're kind of around to you know they're kind of going to stay you know for the next few years from the from the the looks of it. But all we can do is just keep plugging away. We've nice few hurlers coming through. We'd like to think, but uh, you know, we'll see what we can do. There's a bit of a there's a bit of ground to make up. Uh, from uh, between us and Valley Gunner and, and the rest of the team. So, look, we'll just try and keep progressing as much as possible and and and, and take it from there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I'll just finish off with a quick-fire Q&A. You can answer as short or as long, and you can answer club, county, college, whatever, uh, with some of these questions. So, what do you remember of your first time ever at Croke Park, as a young lad or, or as a player? Croke Park, geez, it was actually... Funnily enough, it was 2008. I'd say um, we played Kilkenny <laughs> in the All Ireland final, so that was a that was a a good day for Water Hurling that day. Anyway, and set the tone, didn't it? <laughs> it sure did. Uh, who's your favourite player of all time? Um, Ken McGrath, I'd say, has to be yeah. Ken. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Why Ken? Same position or just the way he the way he did it? Oh, uh, he was just from when I was a young lad. He was still playing, and he was just he was just a monster. Like um, you know, and he was he played every day with. With his heart, you know, just like an absolute tiger inside, and he's just, you know, definitely my my favorite player of all time. I remember looking up to him the most. Who's been your toughest opponent, and why? Oh, toughest opponent. Um, I'd say it has to be probably Keen Lynch. I'd say he's a, uh, you know, he's smart hurler. You know, plays with plays with his head a lot, and um, you know, he needs no introduction or explanation. You know, he's just a very cute all around hurler, and you know. Deserving heart of the year this year as well, you know. Yeah. What's the team you most like to beat? To beat, uh, I say, won't come as a surprise. Probably Limerick, you know. Um, probably Tipperary as well because of the, because of my mother's connection. <laughs> What's your proudest day playing GA? Proudest day, um, probably. I'd say probably my league debut against uh, Cork in twenty back in twenty nineteen again in the. In the Allianz League, that, probably that day, I'd say. Yeah, just mm. first competitive day as, as a water hurler was probably that was the proudest day. Yeah. Were you 18 or 19 at that stage? Was uh, it? I was 19 at the time, yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, who's been the biggest influence in your career? Um, Probably can't look too far beyond uh, family, I'd say, Shane. Yeah, probably my my father or, or my mother take her pick between between the two of them, you know. Mm. Favourite stadium to play in? Croke Park. Uh, best uh, atmosphere you've played in? Well, kind of hard because the last um, the last two years have been empty stadium kind of job. So uh, yeah, even going back to that league game against against Cork, it was the, it was Liam's first game as as manager, so it attracted a fairly big crowd. So probably that day, I'd say, yeah, because it's been kind of COVID ridden since mm-hmm. since then. You know, what's the biggest disappointment of your career? Had to have been losing the All Ireland final in, in 2020, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. Who's the Joker on the Waterford panel? Um Joker. Ian Kenny. Oh yeah, why so? Uh, he just fancies himself as a bit of a as a bit of a comedian. <laughs> okay. Who's the uh, best trainer? Best trainer. Um probably Connor, probably Connor Ponty, I'd say, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, who's the best dressed and who's the worst dressed? Best dressed. Um, I'll go worst dressed first and say Tom Barron and best dressed Caelan Lines. Okay, and are we looking at boot cut jeans there with Tom? Uh, he kind of arrive in in yeah, the old farming clothes sometimes, though. He wouldn't be fresh off the farm. So. <laughs> uh, which player loves the media attention? Ooh, um, I'll go Austin on that one. <laughs> Who thinks the women love them? Uh, there's a couple of candidates for that now, I'd say. Um, I, won't name, I won't name names on that one now at all. <laughs> okay. Uh, what player from another sport do you admire? Um, Michael Jordan, basketball. And uh, final question then, what manager from another sport do you admire? Oh, Brian Cody. It has to be Brian Cody, yeah. Really, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah. But No, but he's the same sport. From another oh, from sport. another sport, okay. Um, yeah, yeah. Manager. Um, Pep Guardiola. 
Okay, okay. Well, look, brilliant to have you on the show, Irla. Really appreciate it, and best of luck with the season.